Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Wanted to take a few minutes and just show you how to hook up the new Subco Redfish IDVM 550 electrical meter. And so we can get watts and uh, in turn get EER and SEER uh, in the MeasureQuick application. First thing you're gonna notice uh, if you look at this is uh, I have a magnet on the back of mine. I actually stole this magnet off of Subco's uh, um, vacuum gauge and we prototyped it out. Subco's gonna be coming out with these in about, I'd say five or six weeks or so, you'll start to see them hit the market, but it is a really handy strap, and if you, if you have one on your vacuum gauge, you can do what I did and just uh, poke a couple of the holes back in the back here and actually uh, fasten it to the meter. But it's got the, uh, the batteries in the back here, so it actually sticks on there quite nicely and holds it and docked when you don't need it. So we're gonna go ahead, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the meter on and turn it on to KW here. And I just have her come in here so you can take a look here. I'm gonna turn the backlight on just so you can see this well. And uh, you can see this is a triple display. So it's got on here the kilowatts, it's got volts, and it's got amps down here. And right now I have the hold button pushed. Uh, so it, you wanna watch that hold button because that'll get you if, you if you're not paying attention. But the backlight's on now. Hold it again, the backlight will go off on the meter. One of the things you wanna make sure of that when you're using this meter, when you're initially connected is the Bluetooth is on. So here you can see the Bluetooth symbol in the display. If I, same button here, the red button is the range or Bluetooth. If I press and hold that, that'll turn Bluetooth off. Press and hold it again, Bluetooth on. If you're not gonna use the meter all the time for um, in a Bluetooth, you can shut the Bluetooth radio off. That will save your battery. It'll run a lot longer without Bluetooth on. But for the most part, if you bought this meter, you're buying it to use it with MeasureQuick with a Subco TechLink app. So you're gonna have that on most of the time. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Bluetooth uh, is, is on in a meter here, and let's go ahead and go into the uh, TechLink application, or excuse me, in this case, Measure Quick. And you can see right now I've got it already hooked up running with a set of job link probes, and you can see our capacity here and things. But if I go to my electrical section and I tap this again, you see I have no EER or SEER because I have no electrical readings in. So I'm going to go in my toolbox here, and all I'm going to do here is down at the bottom it says Add New Tools. Click on the Add New Tools button, it'll scan and find the meter. So I just hit save. Now the meter's saved in the toolbox. This is in my toolbox, but it's not connected. So as soon as I tap connect, it's gonna actually go out and connect, and now you can see it's a zero watt button on, on there. If I were to go in here and change the reading on my display, like I change it to Hertz, you'll see it'll change to Hertz here, or ohms, or whatever I have here. In this case, ohms, if I hit my function key, you can see I can scroll through all the different readings on there. That's forward diode testing, and then back to ohms, and, uh, microfarads for the capacitor. In this case here, I want to measure watts. So I'm going to go back to kilowatts and there we got the reading on there. So now I'm going to go back to the home button here and I'm going to go to my electrical section. Now in the electrical section up here, there's a plus button that says configuration. You've got to make sure I have it configured right. So in this case, it's a split system, single phase. You can tap on that. You can see it's single or three phase and I cancel here. So like my voltage, this is all 208 volts. So 208, 115, 230 and I, I, everything's configured for my air handler. So that's all good. I can close this up just to get it out of the way for now. Now you can see I have nothing here. I'm not making a reading yet. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just move this over here a little bit. I'm gonna clamp, clamp this around my blower line on here. So now I've got a reading. Just go ahead and take my two leads here. And what I gotta do now is I gotta measure the electrical section. So always use one hand if you can when you're making electrical measurements. So you can see right now, if you look at the screen here, we got our 231 volts coming in. Uh, our voltage is 208, so our power in watts, sorry, is, is 231 watts, 208 volts, 1.1 amps, 0.99 in the power factor. And then I'm gonna hit the capture button down here on the app. And when I capture that, that locks that reading in. So now when I take this back off again, I don't have to worry about that reading. So now this is my indoor reading. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make the outdoor reading. We'll go over here and I'm just gonna get on my hot leg coming in. So this is my conduit supply voltage. So now I'm just gonna grab one of the hot legs. So this is 208 single phase. So whatever's going in the black comes out the, out the red or in the black, it just keeps going through like that. So it's either, either wire is okay to get the current on. Now I'm gonna just go up here. I'm gonna touch on each side of my contactor. Just use the screw so I can hold it in nice and tight. You can see now I've got 993 watts, my 208 volts, my amperage, and my power factor. I'll go ahead and hit capture on there. And now that data reading is in, and I'm good to go. Now, if I hit submit on this, 
Now you can see that I got my EER at 11.2, my approximate SEER, and all my electrical readings are in. And this is what's called fan efficacy. This is just simply watts per CFM. And so I've got all the electrical information from my blower. Total external static pressure would come from a manometer, which you don't have hooked up there, but now you get the idea. So that's all that's with that. Now I want to show you one more thing before we go on here. And if we go back to the electrical readings for just one second here, tap on electrical and go into the electrical section, you can see that this power factor here is running about 0.99, right? Power factor of 0.99, that's a really good power factor. And if I go back here to diagnostics for a second, you can see that I have low load on the evaporator because it's cold in here. And maybe my system's not stable, let me hit clear on here. So I got a couple, of, a couple of small faults here. But this will also pick up electrical faults, so let me just show you how that would work. So what I'm gonna do is I have a rheostat over here, I'm gonna slow my fan down. When I slow my fan down, what that's gonna do is now my fan is not optimized for this capacitor on here. And this is gonna give me a, a different power factor. So I'm hooked right up here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure again. Let me go back into electrical here for a second. I'm gonna hit clear for my evaporator fan. And now you'll see my power factor here is about 0.58 on there. So my power factor's dropped way down there. When I hit capture here, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the electrical diagnostics for just a minute, I'll hit submit. When I go back to electrical diagnostics, what you're gonna see here is that the power factor in the blower motor is too low, right? So it'll tell you if the power factor is too low and then if you tap on this one more time, let me just tap on this one more time here, power factor's low, what you're gonna see is that it's a potentially failing run capacitor. Now in this case, you're not gonna have a, uh, a rheostat on your machine like I have that's gonna slow the machine down here, but if you had the same characteristic, the blower motor would be running slow, the power factor's off, and now you can go into TechLink and actually test the capacitor and make sure that it's working right. But we do do some top level electrical diagnostics and measure quick to help you guys along the way if you don't know what things like power factor are and that's how you use them. So this gives you a good overview of how to use the Redfish IDVM 550 with MeasureQuick. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them in the video. Thanks a lot for watching.